Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube with some twist tie cards today. There's four different ones, flamingos, giraffes, dogs, and elephants. And they're all so stinking cute. I was so excited when I saw these. I love that Art Impressions makes so many different kinds of interactive cards. So let's get started. I'm gonna work on the flamingo and I'm gonna show you how to color it today with some Copic markers. But I want to show you this pack of papers. They fit into an A2 and they have an A2 with them, but I'm going to cut my own just so you can see how that's done in case you don't buy the papers that they come with. It's a nine and a half by five and a half and you score it from one side on a two and a half and the other side on a two and three quarter. Or if you have a long board, you just score on a two and a half and a seven and it'll give you a two and a half on one side and you want the larger one on the left and the smaller one on the right. So on the two and a half side, we're going to start, that's going to be the side that folds in, but we need to line our stamp up using the little alignment L-shaped thingy there, showing it to you with the plastic so you can see it, and then try to line it up so that the image is touching the edge. And make sure that it does that so that it's going to do the right thing when you do the twisting and stuff, when you do the enclosure on the card. The dies for this are hearts in the background, so there's going to be a heart shape half on one side, half on the other. And here my, my heart edge is a little bit crooked, so I may have a little issue. If it's really crooked, start over. <laughs> you might even want to try doing this by stamping first onto a piece of perhaps uh, scratch paper so that you can sort of see how it lines up and check it using your die, because if your die fits so that the heart edge is straight, then you're gonna be okay. So here I'm gonna do the same thing on this side with the other flamingo, line it up on the left-hand side. You can also put down some plastic. I'm just using the plastic packaging from this and I kinda of, oops, I missed covering the top of the flamingo. So I got a little of the hat on there, but fortunately it lined up. So I'm gonna be able to still use this piece of paper. I have not wrecked it and stamp it and get it all ready to roll. By the way, that long magnet is one of the new Misty magnets. If you have not got one yet, it's really helpful in holding things down. This one lined up a little bit better. My edge on the heart, that straight edge, is a little bit straighter. So we're gonna try it and see if this works out. So I'm gonna do my die cutting. And one way that I know that my die cutting didn't go exactly perfect is that I will need to do a little snip so I may have some issues when I do my folding. So I'm gonna try it and see how it goes. But just so you can see what I'm doing, because it's gonna be hard to see white on white, I'm gonna put my liner on the inside before I do and hope that this works. Now I'm doing what I'm calling a soft fold. And after making a bunch of these, I realized the soft fold is gonna help me because if these don't line up just perfect, if they need a little bit of an adjustment that like if I could pull one panel over just a little bit more, they'll line up better because that's where my, my thing being just slightly off makes a little difference. I can kind of move it, hold it, and then score it and adjust my score just slightly to fix that a little bit. I'm also on some of these not happy with how they're die cut. Like the die cut doesn't go as far as I like it to go. It certainly goes enough to cut out that heart, but I wanna show more of the legs of the second of the, the two flamingos, so I cut that part out. And then on the other flamingo, even though it's not gonna show, I wanna do a little cutting right around that cupcake. And on a bunch of the different ones, I did a little bit of extra cut, cutting because that's how it goes. You know, I'm, I'm obsessive about making them just the way I want them. So I'm gonna do some Copic coloring, and I'm only gonna color one of them because the other one is like the same but different. So I'm gonna just show you on one of the flamingos. And I'm using some colors that are not your RVs. A lot of people use RVs for flamingos, but I decided to look them up on the web and look at what they really look like. They have, a lot of them have a little bit of really strong red. So I decided to throw a little R24 in there and let the rest of it be the pinks but not the RV pinks, but the red pinks. And well, I shouldn't say that not the RV pinks because RV42 is kind of a, it's more of a reg, red pink than it is a pink pink because the RV0s are the ones that I'm thinking of that, that I, I didn't see in the 
flamingos that I looked at in pictures. So I'm going to use my secondary color, which is the RB42. If you don't have this one, you can probably use like an R21, something like that, R23, to do this mid-tone color. And I'm drawing in some feathers for him so that he has a little bit of texture to him because they're feathered birds. They're not perfectly smooth birds. So I'm going to give him a little bit of realism, a little tiny, tiny bit. And I was trying to figure out what color I was going to use for the, the next shade darker. Like, how is I going to do that? Because there isn't a color that does exactly what I wanted. So I took my R24 that I just had out and it's all messy. I have all that ink blobbed all over the handle of it. So I decided to do the tip to tip technique. I haven't done this in a long time. So here you go. If you want to make the color just a little bit darker, then touch the marker that touch the lighter one to the darker one and you'll pull in a little bit of color it doesn't really ruin your nib as long as you use all the color off of it. So you don't want to leave that color sitting on there. But it gives you that interim color in between the two. And lets you do a little bit more smooth shading. And that's a super helpful thing it, sometimes. Then I grab my R00 to smooth out a few things. Just going over top of some of the feathers will soften them out. And then I can bring some of that the feather work down into the white areas. Decided to give him a gray, uh, blackish, grayish nose, a little tip to his beak. Not his nose. That's not a bird's nose, right? <laughs> it's his beak. And then I decided he was going to be wearing black and white for the party outfit because I didn't want to add a whole lot more colors to it. I wanted it to be, I wanted that, that teal color from the inside, the blue green color from the inside to really pop. So against the, the black and white hat, it's going to show up more. And then I'll use a little bit of a blue in my white areas. Now, when I saw that I was going to be putting this against that teal color, I said, wait a minute, let me grab my blue green marker and go around the edges of this so that right in that area, not around the whole bird, but right around the center, it's colored so that that white doesn't show. And look how cute they are. They nest together. They twist around each other. And on this one, I decided I wanted to cut off that heart a little bit further because my alignment made that end. That end just didn't quite line up quite right. So I just cut that panel off. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So I want to show you all the others that I made from this series. Oh, first, before I do that, let's put the sentiment on. I did that just with a little dimensional adhesive and put the birthday sentiment on there. And here's one with giraffes. They come together and are so cute as well. Stinking, darling little giraffey guys. And I did trim off some of their bodies as well as on these little dogs, little wiener dogs with a wiener hug. So all of you wiener dog lovers are gonna have to have this one because it's so cute. And then the elephants, one of them's holding a flower and they intertwine with each other. And I used a little bit of purple in my coloring. So after I got all my gray done, I went over it with a BV00 to make it all feel kind of purple. So here's some of the other cards that are in this series that I'm doing this week on the Art Impressions Interactives. This one is a trifold. And then I have a second one with circular trifolds. And I show you four different ways to use them in the circular trifolds video. We also are going to have some flutter cards coming up tomorrow. That'll be the... Um, the last of the interactive ones. Oh my gosh, they're so much fun. Little animals with wings and ears that fly. And that's about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this. Please come back and visit me again. And you can do that by subscribing and clicking the button to have everything emailed to you so you don't miss a darn thing. And I will see you guys again next time. Links are in the description. Bye-bye.